The following was recorded in front of a live studio audience at the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. This is the United Podcast Network. Welcome to the Sicilian Corner, winner of the Italian Heritage Media Award, with your hosts, Tom Zappala and Mike Lamazzo. Mikey boy. Hello, hello. Mike, you owe me an apology. I owe you an apology? Yeah, you were a dink last week. I felt good. I know. I was that's, feisty. And you know something? You're going to be for, you're going to be forgiven for that, and I'm going to I'm going to tell you why. Because you were you were very you were very mean to me on the air. I was hurt. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. Uh, no question about that. After the show, I had to go to both Chrissy and David for you know, consolation. They consoled me because you were very mean to me. You needed therapy, did you? Well, you know, you you were mean. But with that being said. After you and I spoke, yeah. I understand clearly why you were a little manic. A manic. Little, a little what? Manic. You know, like they have manic depressives yeah. where you were in the manic phase where like you were off the wall. Far from it. I felt like a million bucks. That's last manic. Week. And the reason being is because you made a lot of money the day before. You didn't tell me that. First of all, I don't ask about the stupid thing. Doesn't want to stay up there. I don't know why. The uh, the uh, what do you call it? The personal aspect of our relationship should stay personal. We, I don't ask you about your books, how much money you're making. I don't. I, it's none of my business. I, I won't tell you. I didn't. I didn't ask you to tell me how much money you made. The fact remains. I didn't tell you. Something on my nose. A little bit. Uh, uh, the fact remains that you know you- what Miss Baca used to tell me. <laughs> you know who Miss Baca was? No, who's Miss Baca? Uh, she was my biology teacher, and she used to say the hair in your nose is the best thing you got going for you because it purifies the air that you breathe. I believe that. All right, then the name- why do you manscape? <laughs> The name of the show is The Sicilian Corner. Let's not go down there. Please subscribe, like, and share the show with your friends. You can watch us on Facebook, YouTube. Uh, you can listen to us anywhere. You listen to your favorite podcast. Uh, if you have a comment or question, just jot it down. You can email me at zapsenior at hotmail.com. Z-A-P-S-R. No, you're wrong. No, no. At hotmail.com. Or you can call Mike at... I won't, I won't give that number. I get enough calls. Hey, listen, we have, uh, we have a great guest today. This guy is coming on in the second segment. Uh, we're going to keep him on for the rest of the show after the first commercial break. His What's your is, relationship? How, how do you know him? His name is Michael Variali. Now, Michael... Oh, it, it ends in a vowel. Well, I like it. Michael and I have some common interests. Number one, we both have no hair. Number two... <laughs> um, <laughs> Michael. Michael is... Not so much an interest, more an ailment, but <laughs> moving on. Michael is a former school teacher, as I am. Okay. Uh, Michael is... I a, could see you as a teacher. Michael I, is, I was teacher of the year three years in a row. It doesn't surprise me. Uh, Michael is a collector, big time uh, collector of uh, baseball cards and memorabilia. Uh, he's in... He specializes in baseball cards? He, he does. He's in a very depressed... State right now, we're gonna we're gonna console him because uh, the Mets. I have nothing to do with it because the Mets lost. I have they nothing suck. to do. The with Mets it. suck, and he's a Mets fan. So you know, we'll talk what about that. What a season that. they had! Holy but Michael cow. also did they win a hundred games in a regular 104, season? Four, I think. A hundred and two. They suck. They were sitting at ninety nine. The manager for, sucks. The manager sucks. Bucky Why? Showalter. Bucky Showalter. What the hell kind of a name is that's that? That's a baseball name. Bucky. Bucky. Bucky Showalter? It doesn't get any better than that. Bucky. Freaking name. I mean, that's a baseball name. Bucky Showalter. Please. It's ridiculous. It's not. For baseball? Right up. Right there. You know what a great baseball name is? Oh, David, you may I, remember I can't this wait name. to hear this. Sibby Sisty. Remember Sibby Sisty? <laughs> Oh, sure. Sibby Sisty. That's a yeah. great baseball name. Yeah, is I it bet really? announcers loved him. <laughs> Sibby Sisty. Run sir. Sisty. It's better than all the hockey names with all the foreign guys. Oh, that's, oh, true. that's true. That's true. But uh, so Michael's going to be joining us. He owns a company called East End Entertainment. He's not just a, you know, they have disc jockeys. He's not a disc jockey. He's an entertainer. He, he does DJ work, but he subs out. He brings in bands. He brings in strings. He I was on his website. It looks like he's a, he's a wedding planner. I'll show you. Does everything. Does everything. He's very good. Did you see that movie, Wedding Planner? No, but he brings his own infrastructure with him. 
Really? Yep. Very good. And he's got a Latino, I think he's Latino, uh, percussionist, timbales, uh, congas. That's my, that's my gig, man. I, if I had to do it again, yeah. I think if I had to choose one vocation in life, if I had a choice. Yeah, this is good. I want to hear this. It would have been to be the timbali player for Carlos Santana, 1970. I would have loved to have been to Timbali. Uh, Jose Chapito Arias was his name. I'm sorry. Phenomenal. Jose Chapito Arias. God bless you. Thank you. He was the he was the Timbali player. Thank you, my son. For Santana, phenomenal. He's had some issues, some personal issues. Uh, with, uh, You're whatever. gonna try and get him at the feast next year? No, he's about 80 now. You're gonna try and get him at the no, feast next year? I probably should. Uh, anyways, um, how did your pontoon thing go? Good. Yeah. Uh, the problem right now is that everybody that has boats in the lake, the water's so freaking low. I mean, so you got to back you all the way almost into the water right. to get it out, and it's muddy. You know, it's murky. Did he use it much? He didn't use it as much as I thought he would. What? Listen to me. Because I, I sponge off of him. When he goes out, Mike Why goes out. Why don't you and I buy it together? I'll make him an offer. We'll dock it at my house. And you, he's got a nice one. And you and I, mm. you and I, anytime we want to use it, you know, you, I could see you. In, can't you see Michael, Mike, in a pontoon with the captain's hat? With Bob, uh, with the. Uh, <laughs> I'm losing my mind. Are you all right? I'm losing <laughs> my oh, mind. Boy. But can't you see him in a pontoon with the white suit? With the white suit, Captain cruising Stubing. down the Merrimack River. With an ascot. What do yes. you what do you think, Chris? With his squeeze. An ascot. And I'm I'm liking wine. the picture I'm painting in my head. Yeah. Right? Looks sharp. Very you handsome, very sharp. Thank you. In the old white with the ascot, I think I would do anything. I would just assume you are authoritative and I would do whatever you said. See? That's called You had a boat, didn't you? I did. I got rid of it. Too much? For the amount of time do you spend on it? No, no. I used to spend a lot of time on it, but Ellen made me sell it. Ellen did. Yeah, she insisted. She got nervous. I almost killed her. That's not a really good reason. Well, she she would. Ne- she said, "I will never step foot in this boat again." This boat was a Boston. Did you, ta- t- did you take the Coast Guard? I did not. <laughs> <You> <laughs> did not. <laughs> mistake number one. That was mistake, mistake number, number one. one. I did not take the course, and I bought a, a Boston Whaler. Nice, boat. nice boat. Twenty-one right. footer. It had Evan Rood. 70s. It was a 70 horsepower. So it went. Went. It was like a jet. Yeah. So it had it, one engine or two? One. But I used to cruise up and down the river. I used to go as far as Newburyport to oh, the nice. mouth because nice. I wouldn't go into the Atlantic Ocean because they would find my body two days later. So would you dock in Newburyport no. go for lunch? No. 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 You, would you do bring a little picnic with you? No, I would do some fishing and then dock at my deck, at my own dock, and have lunch. But one day I decided, Ellen used to cruise with me, and she enjoyed it. And then one day uh, I was heading towards Haverhill and decided to open it up to see how fast it could go. This is summertime oh, yeah. when the water's really low and the rocks are short. No, 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 no. no. The, the water was high water tide. water was good. But a big cigarette boat came past us. <laughs> Those things are a pain in the ass. So as, as a result, he created about an eight-foot wake. Oh, Jesus. So, I, <laughs> I went you airborne. Had to go, you had to go into it. Airborne. Okay. Yeah. 10 feet off the, off the water. So, Ellen. That did it. That was the end. That was the end. So. But I'm surprised you didn't take the course guard course. Eh, I never got around to it. What the hell do you know about that? I took it. Can you drive? I can drive. I don't have my license isn't good anymore, but I could drive. Chrissy, have you, you like boats? Um, I like boats. Boats generally don't like me. You get seasick? I do, I do. Now, I, I recently learned, I went on a fishing trip, and a bunch of friends, about 30 of us, a private fishing charter, you know, you all throw in, and it's like 40, it ends up being like $40 a piece, so if anyone wants to go, I'm just saying, it's not that expensive. Up in Hampton? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it ended up being like 30 or 40, oh, it was about 40 a piece. Yeah, that's Eastman's. For 30 of us, but Pro- it was a big you boat. East, we Eastman's. all Eastman's, must have been Eastman's. Uh, no, it was a name that I'm terrible at pronouncing, okay. but... It's one of those companies Whatever. out there. Yeah. Anyway, so everyone's like, come, come, come. And I said, I get seasick. But you know what? Like, as I get older, I'm trying to, like, work on this. Maybe it's more of a psychosomatic thing, yada, yada. 
get on the boat. I'm doing great. I'm having a great time. Then we finally stop. So as we're going out to sea, great. It doesn't matter. I'm fine. We stop, and then it starts with the oh, slow you, rocking. Yeah. I hate I'm that. I'm like, I think I'm okay. I think I'm okay. Nope, I wasn't. But I went and laid down for an hour, woke back up. I somehow, while I was sleeping, I think my body like adjusted. I went out. I caught the most fish. Everyone Did you was, really? Yeah, everyone was not wow. happy with me. We were having a competition. I you sick know for an hour, woke up, caught the most fish and one crab, and we went back. You know, you know what else works when you're seasick? Uh, future? Future? Seriously? Yeah. Reflexology. See, well, I got like pay to take a masseuse out there with me. No, all you do is <laughs> there's, there's a spot under your foot, okay, in the almost near the like the the arch there, mm -hmm. and you'll notice it's very tender, and that is the spot that connects to what's called the vagus nerve, okay, which is the deepest. I never most, had any luck in Vegas. Most sensitive nerve <laughs> in your body, and that's what causes. Uh, nausea. Uh -uh. If you massage the heck out of that, it hurts. You researched this, did you? Oh, I did. I did. It's called the vagus nerve. No, it's called reflexology. You're going to affect the vagus nerve. Come to me, Dr. Tom. You know that. So if you mess up, it's going to hurt. Oh, it hurts. It it's, it's, a, it's sensitive, but once the hurt goes away, that's when you've adjusted. Huh. It's called the vagus nerve. We, uh, I told you the story uh -huh. real quickly uh, in Boca. I had my license. And I rented a boat. I was going down to Fort Lauderdale. We're going to Shooters. You ever been to Shooters? No. Been to... Uh, On the Inter... In the Intercoastal? No. Yeah. Hooters. No. Oh. Anyway, long story short, I ended up getting three tickets in one day. Did three. you really? On the boat? Yeah. Three tickets. They should have taken... Not one. You know. See, well, that's Not dangerous. Two. You know, you're taking other people's lives in your hands. No, no wake zone. What the freak is this no wake zone my, bullshit? Right in front of my house is a no wake zone. Yeah, I see what they do. Everybody so, freaking breaks the who's rules. Who's the guy that mooned you? The guy in the cigarette boat. <laughs> What's, sorry, just clarifying. What's it called? The no whatever zone? No wake, no wake. zone. Okay, a cool. No, a, it sounded like Mikey was saying no wig zone. No. A no wig zone. <laughs> a no wake zone is an area that they have to go at a certain speed, like five miles an hour or less. Yeah, right. So they don't make yeah. it all choppy. But in my in front of my house, it's like the speedway. None of nobody should hear. Nobody them. pays attention. Yeah. You got to hear these. But they're so big. They're so powerful. The guy, the guy mooned me. I know. I said that. He stopped the boat and mooned me. I think it's great. That's hilarious. See, I like him. and and <laughs> was sitting, funny. I used to have this horn. You know those. Uh, the ones you squeeze and they make a I, loud noise. Yeah. I remember that. Like, ow. Yeah. <laughs> so every time this guy would come by, I would, I would be on my dock fishing, smoking a cigar, and I'd hit it, right? And he would never stop. Finally, Ellen and I are on the dock one day. We're having our martini, actually. And I'm smoking a cigar, and he comes barreling by, and I hit it. And he stops the boat, drops trow, and moons both of us. <laughs> <laughs> I went like this. I said, not bad. Not well, you bad. know what? Yeah. You can't, no, you can't get mad at that. Oh, you have God, to just no. applaud it. Like, oh, yeah. yeah no, touche, was, sir. Touche. I did he, my heart. He, he was funny. He was, he was pretty funny. Oh. How's, the, how's, your new, how's your show doing? Your collectible show. You know, you hurt me. <laughs> I couldn't hurt you if I hit you over the head with a hammer. How long have we been together? 21 years? Uh, it'll be 22 years for this show, December 4th. How many times have you watched the Great American Collectible Show if from in its entirety? <laughs> when is it on? <laughs> you have never. It's it's also the, it, the podcast is on all the time. You've never watched. Oh, it. it's available on podcast on demand. <laughs> have you ever watched it? Uh, no. <laughs> Not, not to insult you, but I have no interest. We, we should watch uh, this Friday, this tomorrow night show. You should watch it. You know what we're talking about? Hmm. Tell me. Pulls, pushes, and stocks and bonds. That I watch. Uh, you know, but uh, when you got to talk about somebody that lived in the 1904, 1905, who worked in a mine all day, then picked up a bat and hit a baseball, to me. It do it's much. a lot more than that, though. Not much. <laughs> what about what about the what about we the guy? Get him and Rico in a room together? This would be an amazing conversation. Exactly. I don't think what you did was that great, Rico. You know what? You know what Rico did for me is bringing him in today. Did I tell you about? I I think I told you, David. Uh, I won an auction. It was a memory lane auction. And by the way, JP, well, that's an old, you, you know you know the guy that offered the two million dollars for the card for Aaron Judge. Yes, he's coming on the show today. JP Cole. Oh, wow. Oh, the ball. 
Yeah, the ball. The ball. Yeah, 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 right. Yeah. Anyway, uh, on an auction, uh, a memory lane auction, mm-hmm. I bid in, I bid on and won 120 Red Sox programs That's from right. 1901 World Series right through last year. Nice. Really? Oh yeah. It's it's it was a big. It they was, were in good shape. The, yeah. The, the, all the money, all the value is in the first twenty five. The rest of them, you know. They are what they are. You know, I have the. But wait a second, let me finish. They were scored. Most of them were scored. How come you can always finish it? Well, because I I want to tell the story about Rico. Okay. So what I did was I took out from 1963 to 19. uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, from 1963 to 1976, that was Rico's career. And I put him in his hand. I said, I want you to sign all of these. Mm -hmm. So he signed the covers. Oh, all of them. So I have Rico's whole career from 1963 to 76 and the programs. You're always thinking ahead. No, when it's it comes from, to Zordis, your mind. It's, it's, for, I it's from that. my grandchildren. And uh, unless I have to go on welfare or something, then I'll sell them. Why? Nothing. Anyways, I wish you would watch the show. You know what I did? I collected in 1961 all the program books for Lawrence High football team. And I signed them. Worth anything? It probably will be. You think? Well, we won the state championship in Massachusetts. Don't you think that, don't you think that this whole Lawrence High... We got a few minutes, David, right? Yeah, two. Don't you think that this whole Lawrence High football thing is getting a little overblown? Number one, and I'll give you a couple of reasons why. How many, how many currently? How many guys were on the team back in 1961? Uh, we carried 65. And now you what, four left? We have lost a few members. Few? <laughs> More than a few. I mean, I, I read... When we get together When I breakfast, read the Tribune every day, is formally played for on the obits. We still got quite a few of You're us. You're down to what, six? Well, we have our breakfast. We're like 14. Out of 62. No, no a lot of them don't live in the area. Oh, you got guys like... And then you get the, and they're then you, down in Florida. And you get the guys in the nursing home. That's true, too. You, they, I'm sure they, they can't we get We zoom out. them in. You do. You zoom yeah. them in. Well, anyway, enough of the Lawrence High 1961 state championships. Mike Lamazzo, first team, all scholastic, got recruited by the University of Maryland, Pittsburgh, UCLA. Who else? USC? We went out to Maryland, right? Uh, right. Two of us. You got your uh, three of us. We went out to Maryland. Tom Nugent was the coach at that time. Yeah. What a facility. Me, they babied these players all by themselves. Beautiful place to stay. Training facilities. It was absolutely fantastic. So, David and Chrissy, let me ask you this question before we take a break. Sure. So, you've got a high school kid that's first team all scholastic and gets offered a full scholarship to the University of Maryland to play football. But he turns it down so he can cut meat at Market Basket. Actually, it was a butcher boy. I'm sorry, butcher boy. Yeah. yeah. That makes a difference. In high school, it that's does. It's night and day. <laughs> right. It does. Night and day. All right, listen, we're going to take a quick break. Mike, G- Michael, not Mike. You're Mike. He's I Michael. told you a hundred times. That. Call him Michael. Michael Variali, uh, Long Island Italian. I didn't even know they had Italians in Long Island. What are they, Are like you three? serious? No, I'm dead serious. We'll find out. Long Island is beautiful. All right, we're going to take a quick break. Hang in. We'll be right back. Ciao, this is Esther of You, Me, and Sicily. I want to talk to you about Tommy Amin and the great staff at Butcher Boy Market. Families, foodies, and home chefs come together at Butcher Boy to talk good food and create traditions. They offer the best in quality cuts of beef, pork, lamb, poultry, and restaurant-style steaks and chops. Produce? All of their produce is hand-selected to complement any meal or even to make it your main course. Their deli serves fresh roast beef, turkey, and beautiful imported Italian cold cuts, cheeses, and antipasto. And don't forget the Butcher Boy Bakery, featuring sweet delectables from all over the state, as well as their very own bakery. That's Butcher Boy, where the secret to a great steak is, of course, the steak. Located at 1077 Oscott Street in North Andover, Massachusetts, in the Butcher Boy Plaza. Ciao! 
Looking for that something special? All of us here at the Sicilian Corner suggest trying Ristorante Uno, located at 119 Salem Street in Boston's historic North End. For the most exquisite dining experience in an intimate setting that serves authentic regional Italian cuisine and features old country service, try Ristorante Uno. Did we mention their award-winning wine cellar? Ristorante Uno, 119 Salem Street in Boston's historic North End. Call 617-573-9406 for reservations. That's 617-573-9406. Tell them the boys from the Sicilian Corner sent you. Today. 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 Today, Lawrence General Hospital has affiliations with leading Boston academic medical centers, top specialists from Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center and Floating Hospital for Children at Tufts Medical Center, work with our local doctors to bring world-class care close to home. Today, amazing partnerships are happening at Lawrence General Hospital. To learn more, visit lawrencegeneral.org slash today. Italian artisan cuisine combines simple fresh ingredients with time-honored preparation to create an incredible culinary experience. At Tuscan Kitchen, located in Salem's historic depot district, talented chefs prepare everything in-house from scratch for all to see. Guests enjoy their meal literally in our kitchen as food is prepared right in front of you. Wood ovens burn from morning till night, roasting vegetables, baking bread, and firing delightful thin crust pizzas. Prime steaks are seared on a wood grill. A rotisserie slowly roasts marinated whole chickens and lamb, while a pasta maker creates fresh fettuccine. More than just artisan cuisine, Tuscan Kitchen features the wine bar, live entertainment, weekly wine tastings, and elegant private dining and event space. Call 603-952-4875 or visit TuscanKitchen.com to make a reservation and learn more about the culinary adventure that awaits. In Italy, cooking is an art form. Tuscan Kitchen. Experience Artisan Italian. Essex Orthopedics and Optima Sports Medicine is pleased to announce the opening of their American College of Radiology accredited MRI unit at their location at 16 Pelham Road in Salem, New Hampshire. So now, in addition to receiving the best orthopedic care in the Merrimack Valley, as well as physical and occupational therapy at Optima Sports Therapy and Rehab, you can also have your MRI all in one convenient location. The doctors and staff of Essex Orthopedics and Optima Sports Medicine have been dedicated to providing outstanding medical care to the Merrimack Valley in southern New Hampshire since 1984. Located on Route 97, just off exit 2 from Route 93 North, on the second floor of the Workout Club of Salem. You deserve the best care, and that's exactly what you'll get from the board-certified surgeons at Essex Orthopedics and Optima Sports Medicine. Please call 603-898-2244 to schedule an appointment. A loyal sponsor for the Sicilian Corner is Hilton Oil Company. Hilton Oil has been located right across from the South Lawrence Common since 1932 at 101 South Union Street. Hilton Oil Company specializes in 24-hour burner service, oil deliveries, including automatic deliveries, serving all the Merrimack Valley area, plus portions of southern New Hampshire. If you want your car fixed right the first time, bring it to Hilton's state-of-the-art service station. Remember, Hilton's is also a mass state inspection station. Hilton Oil Company. 101 South Union Street in Lawrence. Call 978-687-9793. This is Cindy. And Mike Kunsler. Owners and operators of Four Oaks Country Club and Grazi Italian Restaurant in Drakeett, Massachusetts. Grazi Italian Restaurant is the hidden gem of the Merrimack Valley. Why is that? In addition to the spectacular views overlooking the golf course, we have an incredible new chef, Oscar Figueroa. We still have all the favorites, but Oscar has created a lot of excitement with his new specials. Scallops, see it to perfection. House-made ravioli with farm fresh local corn. And buttery tender lazy man's lobster, just to name a few. You have to come experience Grazi Italian Restaurant for yourself. Grazi Italian Restaurant, located at Four Oaks Country Club, 80 Meadow Creek Drive in Drake, Massachusetts. Hope, Hope to, to see you, you soon. soon. Okay, we are back. And, uh... What about Butcher Boy? Are we doing a live read today? Well, um, yes or no? Just You don't have to get into, like, a war and peace. Okay. Yes or no? Well, yeah. Later on. Later on. All right. All right. We are pleased to bring in... Now, see, this guy is... He is more loyal to, to the 
to me than you are. <laughs> All right? Because he is a, he's a follower. He How much watches, do you pay him? He watches the Sicilian Corner. He watches the Great American Collectible I Show. See it, I see his name all the time. He's every a week collector. S- Sicilian Corner. Michael, how you doing, brother? I'm doing very well, Tom. Thanks for having me. Good morning, Michael. Good morning, sir. How are you? But, uh, Michael, we, got, we have a lot to talk about. Uh, first of all, our condolences because your Mets suck, uh, as we, we, we well know. And I know that you are a rabid Mets fan uh, because I've been, you know, I, I get your your texts and emails and all of that stuff. Are you depressed right now? I don't know what you're talking about, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> what Mets fan? Are you talking to the right Michael? <laughs> I, are you really upset uh, about uh, what's happened to the to the Mets? Oh, uh, what can you say? Dude, they just had to win one game, <laughs> one, one game, just one between the Braves or Chicago, and we didn't have to go through this fiasco. A few days ago, you know that's like us saying all Buckner had to do was field that been. ground ball. That's all he had to do. <laughs> so true, right? And uh, another good friend of ours, uh, Noel and Steve Lane. He is a rabid Yankees fan. Oh yeah, and his team is the next to go down. In my, that's my prediction. They're the next to go down. But anyway, yeah. Well, Michael. Anyways, my condolences. Even though they, I want to ask the both of you, where do you think Judge will end up, Michael? Uh, as well, I think, well, I think Uncle Stevie, the Mets owner, is going to open up his pocketbook. Steve Cohen. And, and making up, uh, what do you call him? him Uncle Stevie? Really good. Yes. On Long Island, we call him, Mets fans call him Uncle Steve because he brought in a little life to the uh, franchise. I think he's going to make him a, a really good offer. And I think, uh, DeGrom is going to be heading somewhere else. Boston. Uh, I think he may go down to the Braves or uh, to the Yankees. And I think uh, Otani may be coming over to uh, the Mets. You're kidding. Where are they getting Wait all a the second. This is all This is all speculation on his all part. All speculation. All speculation. Are you kidding uh, me? It's a, it's, a, it's a wish list. By the way, yeah. Mike, Michael, you know that uh, Steve Cohen is a big-time investor in collectors. You know that, right? Yes. He's, he's a big-time investor in PSA and Collectors Universe. I, I think the collectible business uh, or hobby, it's an industry. Upon what you, it's, it's an, an industry. industry. It is a great way to hide money from the IRS. <laughs> That's what I think. That's what I think. <laughs> oh, look at him. Look at right him. He can't even keep a straight face. Good point, though. I have a very good point. Well, you know, you know, you and I have had a discussion, and Michael, uh, I, don't, I don't know, I'm, I'm telling you this for the first time. Um, we had a good year. ATS Communications had a very good year, as you know, with uh, some of the projects that we were involved with, along with some of the consulting that we did for some nice companies and radio and TV stuff. So our accountant said to us, you need to spend... When's he get out of jail? <laughs> oh, it's a she, number one. Huh. And it's called cost, uh, cost of goods. So she... Uh, it's been, I've, I've wait, t- wait a minute. It's called what? Cost of goods. Cost of goods. Yeah. So it's COG. Correct. I have had... Be uh, careful now. Michael... I'm talking to Michael Barrialli because you're a nitwit. Uh, <laughs> Michael, I, nitwit. I, I have been, and you can, you can really appreciate this. It's been like going shopping in the, the, the greatest store of all time, and you have X amount of dollars to spend. So she said to me, you need to spend this money. You need to buy, buy cards and memorabilia that are, are going to either hold their value or going to be worth a lot more someday when you decide to sell them. So you're taking your gains and you're reinvesting Correct. them. Is that what you're doing? Correct. And you're able to do that without incurring a capital gains? Correct. Event? Really? And it's all legal. And it's fun. And it's a blast. So, Michael, I bought some really cool stuff, uh, but we won't get into that right now. I, got, I still got another thirty grand to spend, so I'm kind of excited. How come, like, when we go out for dinner, you don't turn around and say, you know something? You've been very generous to me. Let me pick up the tab tonight. How many times have I done that? Let's, let's get oh, back no, to Michael. No, no, you, uh, what, did, what did you just say? <laughs> oh, my God. Michael, you, you ever get down to Boston? 
Uh, yes, I have, and that's where I got the uh, my, uh, Red Sox side. So you have been down here. That's good for you. Next time you come down, you got to look us up. But let's talk about East End Entertainment. You're not a disc jockey. Uh, that's that's kind of like a, a, a I don't want to say an insult to call you a disc jockey, but you're a lot more than a disc jockey. Uh, not a disc jockey, but a, a jockey. Uh, you you're an entertainer. I mean, tell us how, your, about your business and how it works. Um. East End Entertainment is a lot of fun. It's uh, we're not. I always tell my clients we're not the largest company. We just have an awesome team of uh, five DJs, <clears throat> acoustic guitar player, an awesome string quartet, uh, some percussionists and vocalists. And when people hire us, it's uh, they're, they're they're part of the family. Uh, we're one of those companies that really focuses on the details. As you mentioned earlier, I was a former school teacher, and to integrate the organization of a teaching lesson into the event outline. Great, great analogy. People, it's, uh, people are really, uh, how can you say, they're so, we're so dedicated in the details, the fine details of an event, the timing or approximate timing how an event should run. And they really like the professionalism that we bring to the table. Um, our style is known as being understated elegance and sophisticated and fun. What does that mean? We have unique uh, style DJ front boards that I personally designed. I've seen those. They're beautiful. Um, oh, thank you. And um, we're not one of those companies who's like extremely loud on the mic. Like, oh, you got to do this. Yep, yep, yep. Right. It's not our style. Our style is to, to read the crowd, know the age group, know what music to play. What's going to work. Yeah. And what's going to work. And in that outline, we want to know from the, our host, okay, what are some of the genres of music that you like? What are the uh, age groups of the crowd? So we know, okay, where we have to focus. Uh, and each, each of the event is different. And when you have, I guess, the experience of that, that that I have and my team has at an event, you just know, okay, this is going to work. If you like song A, you're going to like song B. It's, uh, it's really, it's, it's awesome Man. when you get an, a reaction to Christian. each song. Well, let me, so, uh, and Chrissy's nodding her head. Uh, Chrissy Cunningham, our producer, Hi. is an entertainer, and she's nodding mm -hmm. her head because she, how many bands are you in? Uh, Three and and you, it's the Four, same. Technically. It's the same thing I with you guys. You read you read the read audience. The you talk to them beforehand, and then you know what you're going to go in with for music. Yeah. That's really yeah. important. It's not about what you want as the entertainer. Right. It's about you're there to do a job and to do it well. And you. But you, my understanding yeah. with Michael is he's just more than concentrating on the music side. You're a wedding planner, correct? Well, the there's another aspect. Uh, which is a separate business that I found called EastEndWeddingsAndEvents.com. Right. I was and on your website. website. That website is a network that I founded after I got out of school teaching where you surround yourself with awesome professionals. And I'm able to refer uh, businesses that are going to do an outstanding job. A lot okay. of, believe it or not, there are a lot of couples from your neck of the woods uh, up in Boston that come out to the east end of Long Island to plan their weddings and stuff like that. So you know, like, that's Chrissy, really cool. Chrissy, Chrissy you're, you're going to be planning a wedding very soon. Right. I so, am. Chrissy, I mean, Long Island. Chrissy, let's Chrissy, do it in oh, Long okay. Island. Come on. You guys really if Chrissy came to you <clears throat> and expressed her vision to you, you would create the whole package for the young lady? Uh, what, what I do is I take care of the music. I, I'm not a, an, an event planner, okay. although some people say, hey, Mike, you should get into event planning because you know everything about the business. And I personally, I don't want to step on anyone's shoes in that aspect. I know that I, when we're at the event and you're working with an event planner, uh, a lot of work. It's, 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 just, it's just the team. Okay. Uh, there are some people that are good at what they do, and I just want to specialize in what I do and make sure it stays The people that are a good fit. Yes. Yeah, exactly. We are chatting with Michael Verrialli from East End Entertainment. Mike, you did say something that uh, 
was interesting. So you have four or five DJs. So you can supply one disc jockey. Uh, I keep calling them disc jockeys, but they're really not yeah, disc yeah. jockeys. You sure. can supply one individual or ten, depending on the event? Yes. Uh, what happens sometimes, as you mentioned, uh, being a percussionist, uh, and even say if this happened just a couple weeks ago where the, the couple brought in a vocalist and we were able to take the tracks and mix them and she was able to sing the songs during the ceremony and during the reception. Mm. So, you know, you put the effects on the, uh, the mixing board and it's like they have the full song behind them. Uh, and you do that with a percussionist, guitarist, and it's almost like you have a band that's playing, but the DJ's playing the track. Very cool. Very and cool. matter of fact, some of the bands nowadays, what they do, they use the backing tracks and they play over that. Yeah, that's, so, that's yeah. incredible. That's incredible. The technology is pretty good. Well, you know something? I, I think the, the most important day of a young lady's life is the, the day she gets married for the first time. And uh, you know something? You don't want anything to get screwed up. And you know something? I think you, you got a good... Your job description is fantastic. I mean, you must have a ball when you do it. Do you get involved personally or, or not anymore? Oh, no. I, I'm, uh, like, for example, Saturday, it's rare that I'll do two events in one day. But what really? has happened on Saturday, my wedding was from <clears throat> 2 to 6. And then I end up doing an after-hours party from 11.30 to 1 o'clock, where I was actually mixed. I, I do mix uh, the songs, and it's, it's a blast when... Someone says, hey, could you play this song? And you have that song that's basically queued up next because you, you feel the vibe. It's, it's a... You're reading the crowd. It's, it's a... I don't know how to explain it, but when you have that... When you're in tune with the crowd and you know what song you should play next and someone tells you to play it, it I mean, there's... You have hundreds of thousands of songs... To go with. Go ahead. You must have some great moves, guy. <laughs> huh? well, I, I mean, you get moving moves, a little bit, do you? Well, well, I'll go like bounce like this here and there, but <laughs> number one, I can't dance. Me and either. I can't, I can't even play the tambourine. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm going to ask Chrissy and Michael a question. How many requests do you get for Mustang Sally? Huh. Um, I, 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 it's a great song, but... Not I haven't many played requests. It. I, I really not many. Really, I, 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 I like it's in it's in my repertoire anyway. Personally, sorry, my so- me to cut you off there. No, um, but yeah, not many people request it anymore. But no. I, I tend to. It's a great I like, song. I like blues and soul right? and stuff like it's that. A great so it's in song. my repertoire. Michael, you don't get too many requests for it either. The, the good question to ask me would be: How many times have you played it? Oh God, this year. Uh, maybe once or twice. See, yeah. that is the song. It's a great song. When great I take song. the deep six, I said to, to, to Ellen and is to the Is that how you're going? Oh, I says, I want to be, Mustang Sally played at my service. That's the only one. I've got love Which shot. version? The Commitments? No, no, no. The Commitments is great. That's a great version, but you got to go with Wilson. You got to go with okay. Wicked Pickett. I mean, the Commitments version is spectacular, uh, but... Wilson Pickett, you got to go with Wilson. How about Love Shack to a crowd? That must get people moving. <laughs> yes, it yes. does. And what's nice about Love Shack, it's a nice, it's a nice break for a song where it's a, almost a five minute song. You get to collect your thoughts, and it ends on a sharp beat. So if you're in that new yeah. wave '80s mix, yeah. Once that sharp beat ends, you could start out with another genre of music. Anything good uh, like by Rage Against the Machine? Uh, no, I haven't played Rage Against the Machine. Can you read music, Michael? Uh, I, listen, I can't. I can't read music. I can't play music, and I can't dance. But I can hear the music. That's, That's all you brother. need, brother. You need the you need the ear. That's all you uh, need is the ear. Let me tell you something. I've been playing drums for 60, 60 I don't know, two years. And I am. You know, we're t- we have we're talking to Arthur Simonelli. I'm the worst when it comes to reading music. You know. I just, uh, I, I, I try, I'm not very good at it. Yeah. But you just do what you got to do, right? Yeah, absolutely. It's, uh, there's, it's really amazing. Like when, you, when you're playing music and you get the reaction of the song or the groom last week is eating his ice cream and he's like, oh, I can't take it. I got to get it. I got to dance. And, <laughs> and it, it's, it's just a blast. That's, that's, that's great. Or, 
All right, listen, we're going to take a break. We that come back. Fun. We're going to switch gears a little bit. We're going to talk a little bit about school teaching, but I want to talk about your Italian background, born in Brooklyn, all of that good stuff, growing up Italian, uh, kind of food that the – do they even eat Italian food in New York? Of course they do. They do? There's a ton of Italians. I didn't know that. Hang in there. We'll be right back. This is David from the Sicilian Corner. You know Mike, Tom, and I love to go to Salisbury Beach, but we love different things and we can never agree. Tom likes the casual family-style dining with great Italian cuisine, Capri Seaside Italian Grill. Me, I love the elegant romantic vibe, sea glass with the amazing view and terrific menu with prices that'll make it the place you want to visit every week. Mike loves a drink in his hand and a cool ocean breeze right off the surf and the rhythms of an even cooler reggae band. We all know Mike loves Bob Marley tunes at Surfside. Who doesn't love a great show? National acts, comedy, regional favorites in the beautiful and intimate Blue Ocean Music Hall. Lucky for us, Atlantic Hospitality is the host of all these great places, and they treat everyone like they're Mike Lamazzo. And best of all, we never have to choose. Park the car once, and all of this fun is right at your fingertips. We can have it all in the heart of Salisbury Beach. Find out about all the ways you can have a great night at Salisbury Beach at NorthShorePavilion.com. And Mike, Tom, and I will see you there. This is Tom Zappler, located in the heart of downtown Haverhill, the Havel Beef Company is a full-service, old-fashioned butcher shop and meat market that continues to be a valued family tradition since 1952. Peter and Monica Carboni's Havel Beef offers individualized service from an outstanding selection of marinated sirloin tips, homemade sausage, marinated chicken, and thick, juicy chairman reserve steaks. Your family deserves the best, so call Peter at 978-374-4795 or visit their website at w www.haverbeef.com. Hi, this is Mike, and I would like to tell you about the Deborah K. Law Offices, a firm that is focused on estate planning, probate, trust administration, and elder law issues. You will feel comfortable discussing important issues concerning both you and your loved ones, as well as having the information you need to make an informed decision about your family's future. How do I know? Because I'm a client of Dan Deborah Care. If you want to have peace of mind knowing that your loved ones are protected, call Deborah K. Law Offices today in Massachusetts. 978-686-4645 in New Hampshire, 603-894-4141. At Catadella Funeral Home, we reinvest in our business to provide your family with the best facilities. It begins with a beautifully landscaped exterior, parking for 250 vehicles, and a comfortable and inviting access to our renovated interior. Funerals can be costly, so you should review and compare plans to make sure you receive services that are fairly priced. I invite you to experience the Catadella difference in cost, facility, and service. Catadella is honoring and celebrating the lives of the people we loved, providing exceptional care since 1929. This is Cindy and Mike Kunzler, owners and operators of Four Oaks Country Club and Grazie Italian Restaurant in Drakeet, Massachusetts. Grazie Italian Restaurant is the hidden gem of the Merrimack Valley. Why is that? In addition to the spectacular views overlooking the golf course, we have an incredible new chef, Oscar Figueroa. We still have all the favorites, but Oscar has created a lot of excitement with his new specials. Scallops, see it to perfection. House-made ravioli with farm fresh local corn. And buttery tender lazy man's lobster, just to name a few. You have to come experience Grazie Italian Restaurant for yourself. Grazie Italian Restaurant, located at Four Oaks Country Club, 80 Meadow Creek Drive in Drake, Massachusetts. Hope, Hope to, to see you soon. soon. Okay, we are back and chatting with Michael Variali from... A unique job. <laughs> That's a fun job. Something you should do. I'd probably be good at it. We got the same talents. I can't read. I can't dance. You would have been... You know, I, I think we got a lot going <laughs> I, on. I still, I still say this. You would have been a great extra in all those... Ita- like Frankie and Bergamo. You would have been a great walk-on in, like, Goodfellas or uh, uh, any of those movies, you know? Bronx Tale. You would have been great. When you saw me on TV doing the talent show, did I look all right? You looked great. How did I look? Well, <laughs> that particular day, it, there was no cameras on the judges, but we heard your voice, and you had your name on the board. And you blame me for that. I got screwed. You blame well, me for that's, that. That's a conversation for another time. Michael, you grew up in... Uh, Brooklyn. Born in Brooklyn. I, I was born in Brooklyn. Yeah. And then at the age of two, we moved out uh, to Lake Ronkonkoma. If you look at Excuse Long me? Island, we moved out to Lake Ronkonkoma. <laughs> oh, I, I, I had that once. You, get, you take penicillin for that, and it goes right away. <laughs> Lake Ronkonkoma? 
Ronkonkoma. Oh, Lake Ronkonkoma. It's a famous stop on the Long Island Railroad as well. Oh, really? And if you look at Long Island, there's a big lake. It's bottomless lake and supposedly has trails up into the uh, uh, up towards Albany, the Hudson River. It's a mysterious uh, lake itself. How far are you from West Hampton? Uh, I am. I live in West Hampton Beach now. Oh, you do? Uh, yes. Very, very uh, cool. They redid the town. The town is beautiful. Yeah. A, a dear friend of ours lives there. Oh, well, her mother lives there, but they have a summer home there right on the water. It's beautiful. Yep. Probably. It's probably a mile or two away. And, no uh, kidding. Um, the ocean is right. And right. I see. I know you're a boater. Where, you, by the way, before we continue, what, what size boat do you have? I have a 23-foot uh, center console. Very nice. Yeah, it's, it's a nice boat. Very nice. Uh, I almost capsized it yesterday. <laughs> um, it's a true story. I'm fishing with my brother-in-law, and uh, I hooked into a striped bass, and as you know, the inlets are kind of rough. Oh, yeah. And between the jetty and the beach, uh, let's put it this way. I was on the passenger side of the center console, and my brother-in-law, not a, uh, not a boating guy, is in my way. I'm trying to drive the boat. With my left hand, <laughs> I have my pole the other in the hand. right That's hand. That's like Kramer when he, when he was on the bus, <laughs> driving the bus. <laughs> and I, and I was, I'm and i looking at the recorder. The recorder's blinking 1.7 feet. Oh, I my see a wave, God. Uh, uh, a wave coming, uh, uh, a breaker. I'm like, we got to get out of here. So I slammed it, put the boat in gear, still had the fish on the line. <laughs> Did you nail the fish? Beyond, got beyond the breakers. And reeled in the bass. <laughs> Was it a keeper? Yes, it is. Nice. See, that's that's that beautiful. Be a that's... part of the lunch today, and we're going to mix it. By the way, speaking of striped bass, what I would recommend you do, you get uh, the striped bass, you put it in cubes. Yeah. You cook it in the sauce and uh, put a little spaghetti, whatever type of pasta. Yeah. And it's fantastic. You know really? something? That's funny you yeah. say that because that's the way my grandmother and my mother used to make it when I was a kid. But interestingly enough, and you can, you're a restaurant guy. Name me one restaurant that cuts it up. No, name one restaurant that puts it in pasta that serves it. There are no restaurants around here, and you would think that that would be the go-to fish. But Haddock is. What the restaurants only thing they put on is anchovy? What what restaurants? That's a fish. I mean, what restaurants? I know serve striped bass around here. There's not one seafood restaurant. Am I right? Right? There's not one seafood restaurant. I've never seen it on a menu. It's anyway. crazy. Now is that? What, it's a bass, great fish. I know, but it's got a bone in it. It does. So you put it in pasta. You got to be really careful. Well, no, you cut. You you you, 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 you fillet you, it. You, you, okay. you, you, yeah, you slice it. Yeah. You, you fillet it, you then cut it. I discovered this uh, by accident uh, during the during the spring run. But hold on, Michael. You don't put it in. Do you let it simmer in the sauce for a short period of time, or the whole? T like you put it in raw and then it, it then yeah, it cooks. Yeah, you put it in raw and let everything season. Does it break sauce. up? Does it break up when you serve no, it? No, because the the bass is a it's is a, a thick fish. Right. It's not a flaky fish. It's like, like a, a swordfish. Food. Yeah. Interesting. Right. Very interesting. It's fantastic. All right. So uh, you grew up in Brooklyn. Uh, Italian family? Yes. Uh, my mom uh, was the Sicilian side, and my dad's side was from Naples. Hey. Uh, my, uh, my grandfather, he was born in New York, but grew up in Sicily. And he came back in a very highly Italian accent. He used to talk like this. <laughs> And uh, a lot of, lot of good stuff. Uh, you know, pasta was served every Sunday, yep. 3 o'clock. You know, you, you had to be there. Uh, but then one time, my mom, this is an interesting story. My mom decided, my, both my grandparents uh, came out, old sets. And my mom's like, she's like, I'm going to do something different. I'm going to cook some chicken. I think my mom, my mom made chicken gullets. And my grandfather threw a fit. Flipped out. Hey, what are you doing? Flipped, the, flipped out. Flipped out. Exactly. Have, uh, That's we funny. We have to have a pasta for our dinner here. Did you have, I mean, when I was a kid, Michael, I don't know about you, but we used to have a three, it was every Sunday we had a three-course meal. Oh, every Sunday. All the time. It was all the time, always. I noticed Michael said three o'clock in the afternoon. We stayed at one. I was brought up at noontime. One o'clock we used to eat. See, yeah. it was noontime because my in-law, Peter, he loved the football games. He loved to have a couple of bucks in the game. So the game started at 105. So he used to have everybody over the house at 12. He could get out of yeah. there, shoot down to the club, the sergeant club or wherever, 
and watch the game. <laughs> yeah, we used but to, God forbid if you came in like 10 minutes late. I mean, he would be besides himself. Yeah, we used to eat at one. But we always had a three-course meal. There was always a soup, a pasta. We didn't have the soup. Yeah, we, we always had a soup, a pasta, and uh, some type of a meat. Could have been, it could have been anything, a roast or – it was always – I don't know how the hell we ate yeah. so much. Did you, Did you eat your salad after? No, salad – salad, you know, that's interesting that you say that. We, my mother and my grandmother never served the salad up front. They always served the salad with the third course, with the meat course. That's tra- the old yeah. traditional Yeah, that's way. how they used to serve it. I like it. it up front. Yeah, they never served it up front. Yeah. Never, uh, which is, you know, pretty interesting. But I don't know how the hell you, – we ate so much food. As a kid. Because then you took a nap. Yeah, you did. I oh, mean, for time. God's sakes, by 3 o'clock, you were in la-la land. Michael, what did you teach when you taught school? I did elementary school. I did uh, everything. As from, did I. Uh, I. As did I. That's why I started. Uh, from, you know, fourth, fifth grade, and then the last couple of years, I did kindergarten. Wow. It was uh, very interesting. I, uh, it was a great time. I started uh, as fourth grade teacher and then moved up to the uh, junior high, middle school. I had seventh and eighth. That was a fun time. <laughs> oh, boy. Social you studies. You must have had your hands full. Social of. studies. Yeah, it was, it was good. How many years in total for you? Just eight. That's it? Yeah. I just taught for eight years, and uh, then I decided to uh, bail and uh, join the family business. Well, you had circumstances that yeah. kind of warrant that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So. yeah was, Michael, I, uh, what's your favorite meal? Oh, um, you know, my, my wife, she's Irish. She just made meatballs the other day, and her meatballs, I mean, mom, sorry, uh, <laughs> but her meatballs are really good. Uh, my favorite meal, that's a tough one, because in my business, I work with so many great chefs. Right. And, oh, I, I anything that's in front of me is my favorite meal of the day. Uh, not to, I do like fish. Mm. I guess I get a nice uh, skirt steak is, is is decent. I enjoy that. I, I enjoy everything. I are, you a, so, are you a big pasta eater? I do like my pasta. Yeah. Is, uh, I, every once in a while, I like a penny a la vodka. The, uh, mm. uh, man, my, my wife is a really good cook. And when we first got married, uh, it wasn't so. We depended on uh, angel hair. And, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, to try to keep it in jaw sauce. And then next thing you know, she starts turning out these gourmet meals. But my favorite meal is linguine, or I like it with angel hair pescatori. Very nice. Uh, Very that's nice. with the seafood, yeah, the, the yeah. mussels, clam, yeah. and a white sauce. Mm. I, that's very good. That's delicious. Our friend Antoinette uh, I was gonna say. serves that. She, she does a fantastic job. Uh, again, we're chatting with Mike. We have about uh, two, f- two and a half minutes left, Michael. Um, again, your website address is? EastEndEntertainmentNY.com. Now, listen, so, uh, hey, listen, I know you're in New York, but for our viewers and listeners, uh, they're all from all over the place. If you're in the New York area, uh, contact Michael Variali. If you're getting married, if you're going to have a funeral. Do you do funerals? <laughs> yeah, actually, there's celebration of life parties. Perfect. Uh, in which uh, sometimes we have to supply flat screens to show a video. And then supply a podium with the oh, microphone, wow. and yeah, those are those are believe it or not, they're uh, yeah, no, I, and I, you know, I mean, I wasn't trying to be facetious. I no, you know, no, no. So you get that, you get uh, uh, birthday parties, you get anniversaries, just about anything that you guys can cover. So, you know, if you're interested, uh, contact Michael if you want to get married. Now, Michael, we're going to start planning Chrissy's uh, wedding uh, okay. in Long Island. Uh, I think a nice seaside wedding would be ideal. Chrissy, in the Hamptons. Perfect. In the Hamptons. Right? There, there's so many great Oh, I'm in if you guys are fitting the bill. Yeah, we'll, yeah. P- we'll pick up the tab. Oh, go all out, Michael. They're picking up the tab. He's got 30 uh, grand to spend, so. No. Well, hold on. No, so Mike, Mike, the 30 grand may just get your foot in the door. There, there, <laughs> yeah. There Don't are things put... called sight fees. Well, on the other hand, uh, Don't put limits on my wedding. The, 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 <laughs> second, the second choice will be on the shores of Cannibal Lake. Oh, uh, at one, there's no water. Oh, that's right even there. better. <laughs> Michael, do you ever have a wedding blow up? Water. I'm sorry, repeat that? Did you ever have a wedding blow up? In other words, everything just a disaster or somebody walked away? No. Uh, no. Uh, oh, we, thank we God. Up, we on the sad side yeah. of things, yeah. uh, a few years ago, 
Uh, we did the uh, rehearsal dinner. Great, great people. And then eight o'clock in the morning, I received a call from the uh, the major day that the the groom died. Oh, oh, oh my God! Yeah, that was that was that was very sad. Uh, <laughs> oh, that Jesus. was you know that was that was extreme. But that's a tough one. Yeah, it, I mean, they told the guys we were supposed to have a, a percussionist, a guitarist, and they they know me. I joke around a lot, and I said, guys, the uh, the wedding's canceled. What do you mean? I'm like, guys, no. Uh, the uh, the groom passed away. I was, I was just with him a few hours ago at the rehearsal dinner. Jeez, my God. Yeah. So, well, well. That, all right, Michael. That, that's, that's, that's blowing up. Wow. That's blowing up big time. All right, Michael, we're going to get you back. Uh, you know, if you're ever in the Boston area, please let us know. We'd love to hook up, uh, you know, grab a bite to eat, maybe get you in the studio with us. Uh, bring oh, that'll some, be great. Yeah, bring some to Bali's. And remember, uh, subscribe, like, share uh, on your platform, uh, viewers and listeners. Uh, and next week we have uh, Francisco Urena coming on. That's going to be a good show. Yeah. We're really excited about it. With that being said, Michael, thanks again to our viewers and listeners. Remember, if you can't make fun of yourself, please don't make fun of anyone. Have a good weekend, everybody. Have a great week. The views and opinions expressed by the hosts, guests, or callers of this program do not necessarily reflect the opinions of the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe, the United Podcast Network, its partners or affiliates.